Hello everyone, for the past month I've been using the LXQT version of Debian 12 and I installed it using the live ISO image as opposed to the net installer. Now previously I have reviewed Fedora Atomic Budgie, MX Linux and Ubuntu in the same way. Essentially this is a review of Debian 12 but as I've been using it for a month I can tell you what you can expect over a longer period of time and how this compares to other distributions. So the live installer for Debian is much nicer than the net installer, but there is a trade-off in that you get applications installed that you may not have needed. I'll come on to the applications later on. The install was fairly straightforward as you can see here. What wasn't so straightforward was the setup of hardware. There is no network icon in the system tray by default, but there is a tool called Conman, but it is far from ideal. I have created a guide showing how to set up the icon in the system tray and it will be linked in the description. Another thing that didn't work by default was Bluetooth and no amount of googling or use of AI helped me. Instead I battled on by myself and realised that ultimately the issue was with the version of the kernel that was installed. So I have another guide that I've linked in the description showing how to get Bluetooth working. The only thing that did work hardware wise was printing and that worked without any hassle. The benefit of using LXQT is the low footprint. The whole desktop runs at around 800 megabytes. It is fairly old school with a menu in the bottom corner. You can type the name of an application and it generally finds it, but I have noticed that clicking on the return link doesn't always work. Another thing I wasn't particularly keen on is the panel. It can get in the way of other applications such as Caden Live. And even if you have it on auto hide, it isn't intelligent enough to realise that you're trying to scroll in another application. And so one second you'll be scrolling right in Caden Live and then it will open an application because you accidentally clicked on an icon on the panel. The applications installed by default in this version are as follows. There is Feather Notes, which is a note taken app and I really quite like it. I used it extensively over the last month for creating video notes. There's also Feather Pad, which is more of a notepad app. Other accessories include an archiving tool for managing zip files and a clipboard tool. The full LibreOffice suite is installed by default and you get Firefox as a web browser and for some reason KDE Connect. For audio and video you get SM Player which is decent enough and Audacious for playing music and you also get SM Tube for YouTube but that doesn't really work too well. I also seem to have half a dozen different terminal emulators installed. Now for installing applications you can use Synaptic. And I deliberately went the whole month without setting up flat packs because I wanted to contrast against last month where I used Fedora with only flat packs. I will be creating a video about that shortly. So I installed Chrome, GIMP, Caden Live and VLC Media Player using apt and installing applications in the Debian format is relatively easy whether you use Synaptic or apt from the command line. If you are new to Linux and you have terminal phobia, then Debian probably isn't the distribution for you, even if you go for the GNOME version, KDE or Cinnamon. You can probably muddle along without using the terminal, but eventually you will be following the Debian wiki, a forum or something like that, and you will be forced to use it. For this reason, Debian probably isn't for non-techies and new users to Linux. Personally, I'm a big fan of Debian, as once you get used to it, you will find it is incredibly stable and it stays out of your way. You won't receive endless updates and most applications work okay with it. I appreciate though that Debian isn't going to be for everyone. If you have newer hardware, then battling to get the right kernel installed might seem a hassle compared to using Fedora for instance, which natively distributes with a much newer kernel. Equally, however, the chances of getting a bad update are slim, being they are few and far between, and, ha and they've probably been heavily tested by every man and his dog before it reaches your machine. Essentially, once I was set up and all my hardware was working, I didn't really have any problems. Feather Notes was probably my highlight, even though it is just a small text editor, and Bluetooth was my low point, but that's nothing new and not unique to Debian. Next month I will be spending the entire month on the latest Linux Mint, so if you want to see how I get on and get hints and tips about Linux Mint, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. But for now that is the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed watching.